Hello there, and welcome to the Passing of the Leadership Baton Series. My name is Cody Hatton. And I'm Kay Leone. And today we have with us Mr. Mill Mint, CEO of NPRL EMP and proud son of Marsh University. Well, sir, we're glad to have you here, and we'd like to start this interview by asking, what is your Marshall story? Well, it goes back uh, 45 years ago, and uh, it actually started at my high school. Uh, my high school uh, student advisor was uh, somewhere from Virginia. I don't exactly remember where he's, he's from, but I know he's from West Virginia. So uh, during the time when we were all applying to go to college, uh, many of my friends were applying to all the big name schools, Ivy League schools and all that. And then uh, one day we were talking and uh, he said, uh, you know, uh, if you really want to discover America, there's a college that I'd like to recommend to you and that's Marshall. So. Uh, I uh, decided that I wanted to go to that school, so it was me and another three students in my high school, so all together four of us that uh, landed at Marshall. So. Now let's talk about some of your inspirations. Can you tell us about some people who have had a tremendous impact on your life as a leader? You know, I, I think it would be incorrect for me to just name one individual. So what I like to say is that over or throughout uh, various stages of my life. I have I've, I've, uh, several individuals who has been uh, very influential to me, uh, mentors to me. So like my high school student advisor in high school, and when I arrived at Marshall, it was Dr. Alexander. Uh, there were a lot of good advice that he gave me. Uh, uh, he's, to me, he's, a, he's a, a role model, shall I say, um, and what he's done with the school. And the other day I was talking to him and he's, uh, you know, it's been 55 years of service that he has not only given to the school but to the community. So, I mean, people like him uh, really, really uh, motivates me to do something more than I would uh, ordinarily do, you know. And also, uh, you know, if you look at American history, there are people like, uh, you know, I'm a Civil War movie buff mm -hmm. and uh, generals like uh, Stonewall Jackson and, you know, and you're talking when he was assuming uh, control of a division, he was only 33 years old, you know. But his dedication, I mean, uh, to the uh, Southern Army, and uh, so I mean, these are gentlemen that really help shape my life, you know, throughout the various stages of my growing up, shall I say, and dealing with life. So I would say it's not just one individual, but several individuals that influence me. So let's talk about your career path. Could you tell us about your career path and a lesson that you learned along the way? Well, I must say there were a lot of mistakes that I've made uh, along the way also. But, but the key thing uh, in my life, uh, I would say, is the, the perseverance and the motivation factor. So when I, when I left Marshall and went back there, I always wanted to uh, major in physics. And, uh, so I majored in physics, and the other thing that I wanted to do was a pilot, to be a pilot. And so I became a pilot. I flew about 13 years. And then I decided that I don't want to fly anymore, you know. And uh, so I got into business, into the oil and gas sector. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not the easiest sector to do business in. So I started as a little service company, providing various services to oil companies. Uh, this was back in 1989. And uh, I started as a catering service provider. And my wife used to tell me, look, you know, you don't even know how to cook and how you're going to run this catering company. Well, I said, I don't know, but I'm certainly going to do it. So I ended up uh, with like uh, 400 cooks and became the largest caterer in the country, you know. And then the company expand to logistics, manpower, supply, whatever the oil companies needed, uh, we provide. Then in 1996, I, I asked myself, I mean, uh, shall I just confine myself to the world of contracting where the contractor is always wrong and the oil company is always right? So in 96, I decided maybe I should start an oil company. You know? So that's how NPR and ENP was established. So it's been a pretty long way, hard, difficult at times, but uh, we've survived, shall I say. So I want to ask you about your values. How have your core values influenced your leadership style? Values. Well, you know, I, 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 I'll tell you something. Uh, when I started business, 
our country, Myanmar, was under a military regime, you know, and a lot of people call it a dictatorial regime, or, and the economy was a centralized type economy. And when I say centralized, that's a command economy. So you can't just go and do business just like you do business here in a free market economy. And there were times where the government would actually call you in and say, look, we'd like to give you this contract, you know, and go and do it. And I would say, well, I don't think I want to do that. You know, I, I have a business that I'm running. It's a legitimate business. I really want to expand in what I'm doing, and I want to go that way. But basically, they said, look, I mean, if you take that contract we're giving you, you're going to go big very quickly. Uh, and I, I told myself, I'm not sure whether I want to do it. You know, I'm quite happy with where we are. And so I think uh, I managed to discipline myself to confine myself to do what I'm doing, what I enjoy doing, what I believe is the right way to do business. You know, I pay tax. I became one of the largest taxpayers in the country. So I, I'd like to do things in a legitimate way, the way it should be done. And I preach that within my company to all my staff, to my management team, and we never deviate from that, you know. So you call it values, you know, so that's how we operate it. Yeah. What advice would you give young professionals preparing to enter the workforce? Um, definitely one is value that uh, we were talking about. Um, you know, I have people working for me now who has worked for me since the beginning of the company. I would say at least 25% of my workforce have, uh, have been working for us for at least like 20, 25 years together. So uh, I have altogether like 12 companies in the group and NPR or EMP is a flagship company. But uh, what we drive is that, uh, you know, we try to build the spirit uh, like a family spirit. I tell my people, let's not call company. Let's call it NPR or EMP group of family, a family company. So we run the business that way, you know, and, uh, and uh, um, I think uh, a lot of times what I find is that young people, when they do business, instead of doing it on a longer term basis, people tend to do the shortcuts and, you know, uh, get rich quick type thing. And many a times I find that they end up failing. You know? So I would advise that you go into something that you believe that you want to do on a longer term basis and just stay in it, you know. There are times that you may fall, but get up and just keep going at it. And, 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 and with that drive, you eventually succeed. So that's, that's what I believe in. You. I want to say this about girls in the workforce. Okay, especially I'm doing oil and gas. So uh, we are an equal opportunity company. And so one of the things that I do is I also promote sailing in Myanmar. We try to promote the girls as an equal opportunity with the boys. So whether it be in sailing or whether it be in uh, petroleum engineering. So what I do is I bring these uh, boys and girls who are attending uh, the Yangon Technological University majoring in petroleum engineering. And I will make sure that it will be an equal spread between the boys and the girls. And uh, it will be during the summer, like two months. They will come and do the internship, and we will send them to the field. And you know, in central Myanmar, it's uh, it's it's pretty tough working in the fields because temperatures can be very warm in the summer and all that. And what I find is that you know, after two months, they have to come back into the head office, and they will do the final presentation of what they did and all that. And from the reports that I get, uh, the girls had absolutely no problem, no complaints, whereas the boys have a lot of issues. So I called the girls in and I said, look girls, I really want to know, why is that that you have no complaints? You know, I mean, you did exceptionally well, on an average, better than the boys. So you know what they told me? They said, it's the motivation, you know, and everybody said oil and gas is a man's world, and we want to prove that we as girls can do equal and better than the boys. And that was the motivation factor, and I, I just simply love it, you know. So keeping that in mind, that about wraps up our interview. Mo, your display of initiative and drive really shows that anyone can be as successful as they want to be and do whatever they'd like to do. So we'd like to thank you all for being a part of the Marsh University Passing of the Leadership Baton Series.